Um, so, hi everyone. Um, I'll probably start today with the just the two words there on the uh, on the screen. Um, dependent independence. Um, somewhat of an oxymoron, but uh, it's something that came to me a couple of years ago. Um, I suppose it, it acknowledges the reality that I feel I face, and I suppose a lot of us face um, today. Um, in that we are dependent on others to live our lives, regardless of how independent we might be, that we are we are dependent to uh, to dress, to wash, in most cases to travel, to work, and I'm sure there's many other examples of of areas where we are dependent that that you can think of today. Um, but what I suppose where I can and, and deserve to have independence, and we all deserve to have these independences, is in deciding what we wear, uh, who who may wash us, who, who helps us where we travel and how whatever work we do is done. Um, and thanks to, I suppose, I've been fortunate so far in life that the I've gone through structures, education structures, uh, structures at home, family structures, friends, that I've been facilitated to be able to be uh, dependently independent. I'm sorry, looking back, I'm always mixing up the two words. Um, but I suppose I'm 22 now, I'm, I'm coming out of education, I'm, I'm facing the big bad world as, as I see it, and um, the structures aren't as, I suppose, aren't, aren't as clear. And I'm coming out on my own, and I suppose sometimes you can feel a bit like this. Um, <laughs> been there, gotten the T-shirt, and I'm sure everybody facing the challenges of independent living sees, um, can see life like this at times. I'm sure we've all been there, in a figurative sense. Hopefully, not too much in a literal sense. Um, although I've been there as well. Um, though, thankfully, every time that's been the case, I've been able to get back up with only a scratch or two. And uh, hopefully, figuratively, as I'm looking to, to go out in the world and live independently, that'll be the same. Um, to, to do that, I suppose, I, to achieve an independent life, I see three areas as crucial to this. Um, one is work. I suppose work that gives me a job, gives me a purpose, gives me income, a means to support myself. Uh, care, obviously assistance, PAs, uh, medical services, OT, physio, again I'm sure there's, there's more I'm not thinking of that, that everybody else can come up with, and a home, a uh, place to live, a place, a base to, to operate from, from where I can work, from where I can be cared for, um, and, and hopefully spend many healthy, happy years. Um, but it's, it's a lot easier said than done, and um, I'm just going to talk through I suppose a few issues that that I've, ex I've experienced in these three areas specifically. And I just at the end, I'll, I'll note, I suppose, my, a little bit of a vision of what I, what I hope um, can make that easier, can make it easier for me to, to achieve these things in the future. Um, the first one is, is related to work, and these are the three issues that, that I've faced, really. Um, ability, disability, and capability, all conflicting with each other in that I have certain abilities, um, I can do certain things very well, I can do certain things okay, and I can do certain things not great. Um, and as I, my disability, I suppose, prevents me from being able to carry out certain, uh, certain tasks. Um, for instance, I'm graduated in the area of media. Um, and a lot of jobs where you start off in media require camera work, require, I suppose, heavy lifting of, of different things. So I have the ability to maybe record a film, to maybe write a film, direct a film, and edit a film, but I don't have the ability to, uh, to carry a camera. And uh, I suppose I find that in those situations, a lot of jobs are, um, while I may have the, the capability to fulfill the job, th my disability is still holding me back. And um, issues of, of care support in the workplace seem to be uh, is something I've, I've found um, quite uh, quite prevalent in that it's difficult to find out where uh, where your supports come from. Work, work in, uh, employers certainly don't either have an appreciation of the need or a willingness to support that, that need. And coming from uh, many of the care supports I talk to, they there's a policy. There's there's some. Uh, some directive for you to have to support yourself in work. And there's some, there's some structures there, but nothing anywhere near, um, as I see it, anything near uh, 
comprehensive enough to support me as, as need as I need. And the second thing is is the I suppose the step up into work, which in a lot of cases is literally there, um, and that's the issue of accessibility into the workplace. Um, so wheelchair accessible bathrooms, um, in many cases an actual step into the premises. I, I had a, secured a, a second round interview for a job there a number of months ago, and uh, it was very promising. It seemed like I was on track to to do very well in it and they said oh will you come the next day for the interview absolutely just to check with you your premises are wheelchair accessible and that lovely two letters oh came came afterwards um, it's another it's another problem that uh, isn't isn't there and there's no there are some supports maybe for employers to adapt their environments but nothing that really uh, does enough to put someone like myself there. And the third issue is around the issue of payment. Um, the, you know, uh, new initiatives like JobBridge seem to be taking over every, uh, every area of employment. You, you know, that there may be a thousand jobs available in, maybe not a thousand jobs, but however many number of jobs available, 75% of these are now coming with a 50 euro, 50 euro a week to work 40 hours a week. And while I'm very willing to, what, to do whatever jobs I can, um, living off disability benefit is, isn't enough to support yourself. And so coming from the work environment, um, facing issues of jobs themselves not being, um, jobs themselves containing tasks, containing requirements that I can't fulfill, um, accessibility into the workplace being an issue, and then payments and, and salaries being nowhere near what they need to be for somebody like myself to, su to be supported. Um, so they're, they're the main issues I'm, I'm encountering with regards to, to trying to work. And then there's the, the issue of care. And I suppose care is the main, is the, the crux of, of things for everybody here today. It's PA support, it's, it's health support, um, and everything else. And this, this line coming across the top, I'm uh, ripping off L'Oreal now a small bit here, I think. Um, and, but it's a question that, um, sort of gets raised sometimes when, I'm, when one looks for care is the issue of are you worth it? And the idea of being a good investment comes up now and again, particularly for young people, I think, looking to go to college, um, 16, 17 years of age. Um, I know a number of people um, may apply for, for funding and they might not get it. They might not get what they want to travel from Galway to, to Dublin to, to study and I think sometimes, and sometimes people feel that they won't get that funding. They feel they're not, they're not worth it. They feel that the, maybe the course they're doing won't place them on a high enough pedestal to, to be able to, to do what they want. And the other issue is, is simply just knowing that you can ask for it. Um, you, the impression you get is that, the impression I'm always given is that nobody has asked for what I've asked for before. Um, now, I would have thought that even a couple of years ago I wanted to go and live independently. I would have seen that coming out from college and the answer I was given was that, oh, nobody's ever gone to college before. Nobody's ever paid for this. But there's so many people in the room here today who are living independently, who through AT or through other means are, are supporting themselves. And that may have been, in, there may have been, it may have been done in college, it may not have been. Um, but there's so many examples there and you don't seem to get that information until you ask for it. Nobody is uh, NGBs, uh, HSE, you don't hear what, um, you don't hear what's available to you and it, it really needs to be. And the third thing is location. Um, a lot of the, I'm sure many of you will have found that the, you know, your funding comes, lo your funding comes locally, it comes from your, Ker so I'm from Kerry, my funding comes from the Kerry HSE. I'm looking to live independently up in Dublin. And the issue at the moment is, where is my funding going to come from? Um, is it going to come from Kerry? Is it going to come from the Dublin area where I'm living? Or where I hope to live at the moment? I don't know where that is. So for now, my funding, my supports come from Kerry, but they'll move. And I could receive maybe X, and say I'm receiving 10 euros from Kerry. Now, obviously, it's a bit more than that. But if I'm moving up to Dublin and Dublin doesn't have that 10 euros to give me, I'm suddenly left in, in a very vulnerable position. Um, and so the location of where I'm based, depending on how many other people need funding, depending on 
um, what structures are there already in place, uh, can it, again, is, um, I won't say, t I suppose t not threatening, but certainly going to have a serious impact on, on how easily I can live independently. And <coughs> the last issue is, is in relation to home, in relation to housing, and um, where I'm going to live. And the first issue is, is really something that um, has struck me recently, looking for a home, looking for places to live. Um, there, obviously, there are many assisted living it, um, I suppose, environments and structures there, um, or support supported accommodation. Most of them full, and most and sadly, the, the line you sort of get is you're waiting for somebody to get sick or die, and then you're in then you're in your spot, and it's it's not a nice it's not, not it's, it's not a nice thing to hear, but it's it's a reality that's there, um, and so you you look for your own places. You look privately, you look on daft.ie, myhome.ie, everywhere else. And this issue of wheelchair accessibility versus habitability really comes up. I could search for a wheelchair accessible house that is within, let's say, the cost, within a reasonable uh, financial bracket, usually for a uh, uh, rent supplement or rent allowance, um, which I expect to rely on from uh, my local authority. and. What comes up is, well, most of the time, most places aren't accepting uh, rent allowance, which in itself is, has, is discrimination. Um, but the, probably the wor what I see as the worst discrimination, it comes from our national legislation, um, surrounds accessibility and habitability, that a house can be wheelchair accessible in that. And all that means is that a wheelchair user can go into a house and go, can go into the bathroom. And after that, there is no other requirement on uh, builders, developers, uh, people provide, providing housing support to make a place any more um, accessible and by habitable then to live in. So rooms, may, a wheelchair accessible house may be a two-storey house with all three bedrooms upstairs and a bathroom that's built under the stairs. But when the door is open you can get inside it. Um, and that is that's something I found very challenging, very upsetting um, and deflating. Trying to uh, trying to find find a, a home for myself, particularly up in Dublin, which is is where I'm I'm looking. I won't say anything about rents or prices, which everybody I'm sure knows about. Um, but in looking for that that housing support, then uh, the supports coming from, as I said already, the local authorities, so development grants, um, adaptation grants, rent supplement. These are all um, reactive reactive supports that from what I can gather, aren't available to you unless you're, until you're already living in an area, until you're already living in uh, a house. And you need to, often you have to be in an area, in a house, for a period of six months before you, live, before you can access these supports. So I may have to live in a building without a ramp or without a, a bar, the bars and the toilets, without a, an accessible shower floor for six months before that funding can come through. Um, there, and I know within the ed within the structures I've been already as a, uh, as a student, most of the supports are proactive. So you you engage with the supports in advance, and you say, "I will need this," and they say, "Yes, great, we will put these in place." Um, and now I'm in a situation where I'm saying again, "I need these things," and people say, "Well, come back to us in six months." Well, wait until you're there. Wait until you're there. But I can't wait until I'm there. I can't live somewhere that I can't live in, I suppose. Um, and the third third point comes in after that as well. Um, in relation to these supports, they're coming from a huge, uh, diverse, uh, diverse number of organisations. So your <coughs> rent supplement comes from the HSE, even though it's Dublin City Council who uh, decide that I'm in need of housing, su housing supports. So the amount of times you may make a phone call, you'll talk to someone and they'll say, oh, we don't actually look after that, which essentially means we're not going to look after you. And they say, oh, you must go here, you must go there. And I suppose there's so many places that you have to go. There's so many different supports that I need. There's so many different organizations that provide these supports. It makes it so, so difficult um, as a 22-year-old, as a young person trying to trying to independently do it. My parents will say, oh, we'll give you a hand with that. And I want to say, no, go off, leave, leave it be. I, I, want, I want to do this by myself. But I find myself 
in so, somewhat of a maze. I could say a maze, I could say a vicious circle, I could say any other sort of interesting shape. But they're really independent living feels like I'm, I'm walking through a maze and you come to you come to one, maybe let's say the HSE, but it's a long way away from providing the, the health care that you need or um, you know, you may find Dublin City Council down one area, but really the housing supports you need are down somewhere else. And so really trying to, to make my way through this maze is, has been a big challenge and I'm sure many other people are experiencing that. I'm sure many people here have experienced that. Um, and I'm sure many of you have gotten through that or find yourselves soldiering through anyway. And um, congratulations to you if you have. I hope to, very, I hope to, to emulate you and, and do, do the same myself. Um, but, and it, see, it feels almost like a full-time job doing this, even though I am looking for an actual full-time job on top of it. Um, so I suppose I see the need for simpli simplification of this. And um, I think people who want to live independent lives need things to be made simpler. We have enough things in life that aren't easy. And I think a lot of us don't know that we can do things um, don't know that we can do as much as we can, we can't, and we need to be told. I would like, if we could be told this, as opposed to ask somebody, ask an organisation, say, oh, can I do this? And they say, yes, you could always do that. Um, we, need to be, we need to be told that we can do this, and we need to believe that we can, and we need to feel that we can just go into something without, I won't go back to the T-shirt now, but without feeling, oh, crap, and feeling like we're falling again. Um, and so this is, I suppose, the sort of vision that I have, and it, it's, I was thinking about it and the more I thought about it, the more I realised how simply it actually connects into the, the work that AT already does. Um, but a nat national structure for independent living that I suppose coordinates, would have offices that coordinate the employment of people with disabilities, the care for people with disabilities, um, housing for people with disabilities. I know transport was mentioned there as well earlier on. Um, it's not something I'd included, but it's definitely something that should be included there. Um, and obviously then AT does so much work around the provision of the funding and the care already that I'd see it as, a, as an ideal, um, ideal ve vehicle, I suppose, for, for taking on, for maybe in the future as it, as it grows and gets bigger, taking on other things like this. And the third point just came from a, a, re a re research, PhD research currently being done um, in Queen's University by a woman named uh, Helen Kerr. Um, an idea that uh, the supports, the organisations, the funding, <coughs> everything people need and want to or rely on um, could be provided to us all through, through a directory, through uh, that, as a source of information and through perhaps one, one person, one case manager, a person who, um, I'm sure we all have them, you know, someone has an OT, someone has a a funding manager maybe from the HSE, a physio, and I'm sure we all have that one person that we, we rely on to, to manage a lot of and help us manage what, what we're going through. And the my idea for having case manager is somebody who's there, who has a file, who can say to you, okay, who, and I suppose as well, manages, the, manages what funding you may receive. So in terms of the, the current, ideas where we everyone is setting up their own company as everyone's and is taking on the responsibility of of uh, of managing managing their independence that this person would act as a uh, as a as a supporter as as an as suppose as, as another assistant um, but somebody that will assist you with everything as opposed to just your just your funding or just your care or just your your health care um, and this could be done through, let's say, the, the, the national structures, the national support, which um, could administer and all this. And importantly as well, I would see it as one, the provider, but also as the watchdog, as, as almost like an ombudsman, I suppose, for, for independent living, for people with disabilities that can keep in check this, this legislation that um, creates this issue of accessibility or habitability or can put in place uh, Opportunities for employment, and we have many we have many organisations like AHEAD, um, Intro, different different groups, but nothing that I think uh, collectively and, and can properly provide for what we need. Um, and I suppose they're the 
they are my, my main thoughts, they're my current feelings on them. Um, I'm sure everybody here can dissect it, take it apart, either knock it to the ground, which please do, if you feel that way about it, or add to it and, and build on it. And um, I think that's, yeah, that's, that's pretty much me for today. So thanks for, thanks for your time. Uh, thanks very much.